Hey YouTube, how everybody doing? Cha Cha here. Uh, today has been a little hard for me, um, to say the least. Um, today marks exactly one year that my mom um, left us. She went to be with the Lord. Um, it's been a very difficult time. Um, also, unfortunately, it'll also be two years on December 18th that my daughter would have been out of the country. Um, and I haven't seen my daughter in almost two years. Like I said, it'll be on the 18th. So I've been going through this journey really without any family. It's just, you know, it's been difficult. But I wanted to come up here and do a tribute to my mom. Um, my mom was 75 when she went to be with the Lord. She was born in 48, 1948. She comes from a family of 10, 10 kids. Um, she was, I believe, child number six. Um, and she had four kids of her own. My eldest brother, from her kids, my older brother, Andy, Andrew, and we call him Andy, it was a nickname. And the second oldest was Deanna. And the um, third oldest is my brother Joey, and then myself, I'm her youngest. My mom had many grandkids. Um, and my mom really loved family. She had strong family morals and values. Um, she uh, was a very strong, independent woman. She raised us in the church. And, um, you know, she was definitely not one to make excuses. If something had to get done, she got it done. Um, as a single mom with four kids, she had a lot on her plate. Um, I think a, a funny fact about my mom was that she, um, <laughs> she didn't like math and um, she didn't, you know, finish school either. So, you know, math is just not my mom's favorite subject. And um, so, when she got a job, she got a job working at the bank. And, and um, she had asked the Lord to help her to learn the job, she told me, because it was a lot to learn, you know. Um, and she was working with a lot of money. She became a merchant teller. She would train other new people coming into the branch as new employees. She also ran the motor bank. So my mom ended up working with a lot of numbers and <laughs> large amounts of money. So, you know, I think that was really funny. Um, I think something that was neat as a, a family um, of five, I mean, my mom being the single mom of four of us, um, they were, so we were a family of five, she did not get help from our fathers. So, you know, she had, she was the sole provider. And as I got older and became an adult, I would find out that one of her biggest struggles was a particular day when she you know she, we were told we had to move but she never let us know we never we, we didn't know that that's what was happening um because she would not put adult worries on us as her children she just kept on going strong so we had no idea that's what was happening and later on i was told that for that whole week at the branch that she was working at the at the, at the bank they said my mom was fasting for a whole week. And um, at the very last day, like five minutes before closing, um, a gentleman walked in and he walked in and said, uh, he went up to my aunt that also worked with my mom at the bank and said, excuse me, I, I, have, a, I have a home, I have a house and I just fixed it up and I am, um, you know, I'm looking to rent it, you know, just wondering if you guys knew anybody that was looking to rent it, particularly, um, he was looking for a single parent, he said, because he knew that if he had a single mom in her house, in his house that he had just fixed up, that he knew that for the love of her children, that that parent would take care of it. And I was told that my mom had prayed specific things. Um, and one of the things that she prayed for was that whatever home that God would give her to, for us to live in, that it would have a very tall fence, like six foot tall fence, because my, my brother uh, Joey could 
uh, easily get out the house so she wanted to contain my brother where he was running and playing and so um, we ended up renting the home and my mom she had to be out that Friday out of the home going into the new home so and again we just had no idea she did not ever bring any worry to us and I um, and so that night after work after a whole week of fasting um, um, we moved into that new home uh, and he was a very nice nice man he was very good to my mom the Lord really blessed my mom he was good to her as a landlord and um, he you know he definitely took care of the home and fixed it up and then we moved in and it was already all fixed up and so you know um, God is so good because you know my mom was a, a woman of strong faith and she um, you know she instilled that in us I want to show you some pictures of my mom. Um, this is my mom. She was a very beautiful woman. I have her smile. Uh, I have a lot of her characteristics. Um, that's probably why I'm so cute, right? <laughs> it took a lot after my mom. Um, I think one of my favorite pictures that I really love of my mom was when I graduated high school because I, I see the proud look in her face, just that look on her face, she just looks so proud of me. And that really makes me happy. Uh, my mom definitely loved her grandchildren. And um, so here's a couple pictures that we took after my daughter was born. Here's that one. And that one, my daughter was just a newborn. Um, it is so funny because, you know, we never stop to think that, like, our parents were once young and all of that to us. They're just mom, right? But my mom was, my mom was actually a babe. She was younger, like, she was a very beautiful woman. So when she was younger, my mom was a babe because this is my mother at 18 years old in Santa Barbara. Like I said, she was born in, um, you know, 1948. And so this was her at 18 in Santa Barbara. She's very beautiful, very classy. Um, and my mom was just a very, very beautiful woman. Um, you know, my mom liked to draw. She was a very good drawer. Uh, she also made a lot of like crochet, knitted a lot. Um, my mom also made baby hats for the kids, the babies at the hospital. She would make a bunch of hats and would give them to the hospital for the babies so these were the last set of hats that my mom made and for obvious reasons I kept them and um, you know this was my mom's Bible as you can see it got a lot of good use over the years because it was given to me and of course my mom used it too first so I'll never get rid of this Bible because you know it has a lot of sentimental value Red was one of my mom's favorite, favorite colors. So this was why well, I, I like to wear red and this, I put my mom's red lipstick on today. This was hers and then I, you know, added another color, but yeah, red was definitely um, a color that my mom loved. Um, this was, she also liked to make jewelry. Um, what was neat about the jewelry was like any normal family, you know, we had our stripes and there was a time when we had, one of the times that we had strife and my mom would later on tell me that, um, she would tell me that she had prayed that the Lord would do something to bring us back together, you know, to reconcile us. And so one day I had went to her house and I had had a little box in my hand, like a little pencil box. And my mom was like, what is that? And I said, oh, I, I'm making little rings and I'm selling them with little seed beads. And so then my mom looked at my little box and she began to organize it. And um, she, um, next thing I knew, she ended up buying stuff at Michael's to make jewelry. And so this was one of the things my mom made. This was one of the last things she made. And one day at her house, you know, cause she was already sick. Um, she saw me looking at it. And so she told me to take it. And she knows something she knew I would treasure because she knew her time was coming. And so she told me to take it. And um, my mom 
you know, loved to dance. She loved family, you know. Um, she just, she, she loved the Waltons. We used to watch the Waltons together all the time. Um, you know, um, in the last couple of years, we would begin to really watch the Waltons a lot together. And uh, growing up, it was so funny. I never really liked to watch them, but then in the last part of her life, you know, like in the last year, maybe, or less than a year, we, I began to watch it, and suddenly I was like, oh yeah, I really do like the Waltons. And so that was something that me and my mom did. We would watch the Waltons. I would stay late at her house watching the Waltons with her. Um, I remember one time I, I made my mom laugh because um, I also like, you know, spy movies and stuff like that. So then my mom was like, you know, well, what do you want to watch? And I was like, oh, I want to watch a good movie. And she goes, well, what about this movie? And I was like, no, I want to watch something with blood. <laughs> she was like, oh. So the look on her face, she was like, you know, it was so cute. I'll never forget that look on her face. You know, um, I think something that I'm really grateful for and I really want to give all glory, all honor, all praise to God was that just a few days, two or three days before my mom would leave this world, I had asked the Lord, I, I need to know that my mom's ready to meet you. I need to know that she's ready to meet you. And so, um, I, um, went inside the hospital. My minister had prayed with me and I went inside the hospital and my sister had been there. She was worn out. And um, so she had left the room to grab a little bite to eat. So I had some time alone with my mom. And, um, and um, as I was, was, my mom had an awareness that she was in the ICU. She knew she was and she knew she was very sick. And um, she um, was like, do you hear that music? And I said, no, I don't. And then I felt the Lord in my heart tell me, ask your mom if it's pretty music. So I said, mom, and she was like, yeah. I was like, is it pretty music? And like her face was like, she was like lit up and she was like, yeah. And she goes, and I'm surprised you're letting the children run and play. You know, they were laughing. And at that moment, I felt the Lord of my spirit tell me what your mom is seeing is heaven. And so the Lord gave me the reassurance that she was ready to meet him. And so I know my mom is in a better place. My mom loved us, her children. When she was asked by her Bible study group, we found out from one of the ladies who was part of a Bible study group and they had shared with us, one of them shared with us, what are you afraid of about leaving? And we know what was she most afraid of? And she said, who was going to pray for her kids? She wanted to know who was going to pray for us. And so they told her, we're going to pray for your kids. And so there's no doubt that they do. And I know that even though my mom is no longer with us here on earth, but her prayers for us continue. And I praise God that he's given me the assurance that she is with him. You know, this was my mom's ring right here. This was one of the last things my mom wanted me to have this. So I'm very grateful. I wear it all the time. Um, God is really good. And... I'm just grateful for how much God has been carrying me through all of this. Um, and I um, just wanna come up here and give a tribute to my mom and praise God for her and praise God for his comfort and his love. And just whatever you're going through, don't let go, keep holding on. You serve God, seek God, because one day we want to hear him say, Well done, good and faithful servant. You may enter into my rest. And I look forward to the day that I get to see my mom again in heaven. Well, um, I want to, again, just thank you guys for listening. And just remember, Jesus loves you. All right.